Please rewind this cassette. Well, this was a surprise. Some actually positive news for Star Wars for once. So, like, hopefully this continues a trend where we just keep getting good news stories. This isn't a Why It Sucks video. This is why this is fucking awesome. Uh, Dan and Dave are gone. D.B. Wise and David Benioff, the masterminds behind Game of Thrones, the auteurs, the geniuses of HBO and the most successful television show of all time. Uh, as you, If you didn't know, they were going to do a Star Wars trilogy. They were going to do a trilogy that took place after the events of this current trilogy, while Ryan Johnson was going to go make his own trilogy about whatever the fuck he wants to write about, because he's Ryan Johnson and he's an insane person. So, I thought this was going to happen. And I didn't think this was going to happen in the same way with Lord and Miller, where they got fired. I just knew that D&D &D had a lot of offers after Game of Thrones. They had a show to do on HBO uh, called Confederate that fell through. I know they've been offered deals by Netflix and other major people. I think they just went with the Netflix deal over Disney because they probably don't want to work with the mouse. Now, it's things where it's, you know, we, we were too busy. That's what everyone's saying. Also, this is the transition of Kevin Feige coming in to work on Star Wars. And we also have The Mandalorian coming and the Obi-Wan Kenobi stuff for Disney+. Plus. So I'm more positive in this than I would normally be because D&D are fucking terrible. They may have been good at some point, but they completely dropped the ball with Game of Thrones, not only with the last season, but the last few seasons. Um, I was not excited for them to do Star Wars. It made sense from a financial standpoint. You get to market a movie from the creators of Game of Thrones comes the new Star Wars trilogy. But I think they were prepping this for 2022, which just seemed too soon, uh, in my opinion. I've often said that what Disney needs to do is slow down production of Star Wars movies, because that's how you get something like Solo where it fucking bombs. The smart thing to do, I would say, is after Rise of the Skywalker... Don't make a Star Wars film for several years. Let the hype build up again. And stick with the Disney Plus thing. I think doing The Mandalorian is really clever. And I think even doing some stuff with Obi-Wan Kenobi, like a miniseries on Disney Plus, is clever. And maybe some more animated shows and so on like that. Bring Gendy Tartakovsky back in and have him do something with Star Wars. But I would say just leave the live-action series alone for in, in films for a few years, at least four to five years. And then when you bring it back, you can create a new momentum. Star Wars isn't Marvel. You can't just make a Star Wars movie every year and expect for it to be some big hit at the box office. It has to be tied to something directly. And Solo, I mean, just how little that movie did. I mean, it made like $370 million. I mean, it was a huge bomb. They spent over $200 million on that movie. And people debate, was it because it was a solo film? Was it marketing? Was it because Last Jedi was so hated? I think it was all of those things combined. I think it was also releasing it so soon after Last Jedi. And we have to see how Rise of the Skywalker is going to perform, because if it underperforms, like let's say the film only makes like $1.2 which would be an underperformance, just for context, not saying that's a bomb, but compared to the other two movies, in particular Force Awakens, I think Disney's leaving a lot of money on the table, and they're just bound to lose more money if they keep pumping out Star Wars films. Uh, getting rid of D&D, &D, well, not getting rid of them, but D&D &D leaving, exiting, is like just the best thing that could have happened to Disney. Because these guys have so much bad press right now. Even though the ratings were still good, Game of Thrones has just universally been shit on. I mean, it's the consensus that it's bad in the end. Even... People who defended the show don't like the last season. So getting rid of these two fuckers is nothing but a positive. And this is the first positive thing that's happened in a long time. I like this decision. Now if they could cancel the Ryan Johnson trilogy, just officially say it's not happening, and commit to bringing in different filmmakers and making those movies or those stories and, and doing television, I think Star Wars probably is suited better for television anyway. Uh, I think they limit themselves. I think it's very tough to craft a two-hour narrative in this universe that's satisfying when you have these perfect, well, not perfect, but you have these great two-hour movies in the original trilogy and the pacing of them. I just don't think you can do that again. I don't think there's a lot of hype for Rise of the Skywalker, and I think Disney's very aware of this. Not just that, I think they were very happy that this happened. I don't think they're, like, losing any sleep over this. So let's read what the uh, articles are saying about this. 
The Emmy, the Emmy winning pair cited their historic deal with Netflix. So here's the thing. They did make this huge deal with Netflix. And I basically think that's what it was. Like make the deal with Netflix or we have more creative control. Or possibly go with the disastrous path of making a Disney Star Wars trilogy. Really from another standpoint you can credit D&D for being very good businessmen. And they were throughout the run of Game of Thrones. And once again, they hear they made a good business decision. Uh, you don't have to go sell your soul to the mouse right now when you have other platforms to go to. And really, streaming is where it's at. Let's see, this is what they said. We love Star Wars. When George Lucas built it, he built us too. Getting to talk about Star Wars with him and the current Star Wars team was the thrill of a lifetime. And we will always be indebted to the saga that changed everything. Jesus Christ. You know, there's another George that uh, that inspired you guys, that you guys uh, fucking brutally ruined his material. You know, so I, I don't like you guys talking to older men with beards named George. Please do not. Um, I, it doesn't work out well. Let's see. It was going to come out in 2022. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kenny Kennedy has plenty of Star Wars projects in The Hopper, The Rise of Skywalker, The Mandalorian in 15 Days. Uh, ramping up the Ewan McGregor series. There's also projects lined up with Ryan Johnson and Kevin Feige. Although the Kevin Feige news also really positive. I think Disney's trying to move things around and, and keep Star Wars momentum going. That momentum they had with Force Awakens and Rogue One, which just seems like a lifetime ago. And it was just a few years ago. I mean, we're only four years out. And it already feels like we've went through a decade of Star Wars. Kennedy didn't close any doors in her send-off statement on Monday. David Benioff and Dan Wise are incredible storytellers. I mean, I guess she has the best taste. She thought Less Jedi was a great screenplay. Um, incredible storytellers. Jesus fucking Christ. We hope to include them in the journey forward when they are able to step away from their busy schedule to focus on Star Wars. Clearly, it's a big fizzle ending for the Firecrackers Fuse headline from February 2018. I remember covering that, too. That was a long time ago. It appears that Tandem's deficiency was in time, not talent. In August, Deadline broke the news that the Game of Thrones duo had signed a nine-figure deal with Netflix, and on Monday, that commitment was the one that brought about the end of the Great Westeros experiment by Disney and Lucasfilm. There are only so many hours in the day, and we felt we could not do justice to both Star Wars and our Netflix projects, the Game of Thrones pair said in a statement to Deadline. So we are regretfully stepping away. I th thank you for stepping away. I guess the big question here comes in, what is the future of Star Wars? That's really what we're getting at. Without me being an asshole or edgy or making jokes or insulting Ray's stupid faces or Ryan Johnson's just... Can we just say Ryan Johnson doesn't give a shit about Star Wars? I saw Patrick Willems put on Twitter, all right, now it's time to fast forward the Ryan Johnson trilogy. Oh, I bet Disney felt really bad that they made the highest grossing film that year. Dude, Ryan Johnson doesn't give a fuck about Star Wars. All right, think about Ryan Johnson's career. All of his movies, for the most part, are like heist films. They're heist stories, including Last Jedi for half of it. But when you think about Brick and Brothers Bloom and uh, Looper, which is really about, uh, I mean, it's a time travel story, but the essence of it, and his new film, Knives Out, which is getting the best reviews of his career, this is what Ryan Johnson wants to make. He clearly has a very skewed view of Star Wars and how he wanted to destroy it and dismantle it and how he viewed the saga and fans' relation to it and all of that stuff. He wanted to go make his own movie. He really didn't want to do anything that dealt with the lore. He didn't really want to do anything with Star Wars. I'm not saying he hates the movies, but I don't think Ryan Johnson has this passion for Star Wars. I think he made that movie so he could make Knives Out, and now he could get the next six, seven of his movies funded probably because he made Last Jedi and it made money. I don't think he's interested at all in doing a Star Wars trilogy. I don't think he wants to go, unless he just continues to be a fucking asshole and he wants to keep fighting with fans and, and be on Twitter and be an asshole and just treat Mark Hamill like shit. But I think just all of that shows that Ryan Johnson doesn't care. I'm not even saying this is a criticism. I just think as an outside observer, I think it's very obvious that Ryan Johnson does not care about Star Wars and doesn't really doesn't want to be a part of it that much. He made what he wanted to make, and now he's going to make the films that he's interested in, which Knives Out is going right back into that Brick Brothers Bloom territory. It's about people fucking each other over. It's a mystery. It's a crime story. 
Um, it's a detective story. It's all of those things that he likes to play with. Uh, and I think his science fiction stuff is comparatively weaker than that stuff. I think Looper and Last Jedi are his two worst movies, where I actually like the other stuff. Um, and I also think, you know, he, he probably wants to be involved more like how he directed Breaking Bad. He could get some work working on Netflix or HBO or anything like that, directing some big projects. Why would he commit himself to Star Wars with all this negative backlash when I really, like I said, I don't think he has a passion for the, the world of Star Wars. And I've never seen him say anything in an interview or back anything up to confirm that. He do, he really doesn't see... It seems like he almost... I don't want to say he doesn't get it, but it feels like he looks at it differently than most people. And that could be an interesting thing. But I think a lot of us don't agree with the way he views Star Wars and its importance and these characters. So I think it's just best to cut ties with him, too. Think about all the bad press. It's time for good press. We need good press. You need to announce a director that makes everyone excited. You know, you need to say, hey... Like a Denny Villeneuve type or something. You need to announce someone like, well, okay, cool, they're doing a Star Wars movie. And you have to, you know, say something like, hey, it's Knights of the Old Republic. You have to come out with something cool. Uh, you can't... I I'm just sorry, this stuff has to stop. But yeah, Ryan Johnson doesn't give a shit. Shut the fuck up, Patrick. You fucking born hack. God damn, you are a fucking hack. You are everything that is wrong with, like, guys I knew... In college who were, were film majors and just how you never got past that surface level that you're still like a 20 year old you know even though you have the hairline of a 50 year old but who cares my hairline's not that great either i just i don't know what to say about all this because i, I i've said my piece on D D and how they kind of forgot and that goes without saying you can watch my game of thrones season 8 review part 1 and part 2 all I have to really say about this is that I hope that this is soon to lead, lead to the exiting of Kathleen Kennedy being involved, getting rid of the, the old guard, and bringing in new creative teams, letting Kevin Feige decide who gets to, to make these movies, uh, rearranging this whole thing to be more focused on a streaming television format than as movies and movie trilogies, because you're not going to plan the trilogies out. At least with the TV show, you could get a group of writers and they can maybe make something good. Out of, and Star Wars is episodic in general, so a, a TV series. I even think an anthology show would be a good idea where you tell multiple stories in the Star Wars universe. And that's very popular right now. Uh, really, the future of Star Wars, either this is going to be the rebuilding that leads to another major hit in something like The Mandalorian, or this is just a continued history of troubled productions, which goes back to Force Awakens. Every single one of these productions has been greatly troubled, and Kathleen Kennedy has been involved with all of them. So until they have a completely smooth uh, production, and and we don't have we don't have all these things that are behind the scenes, and we don't have actors coming out saying they disagree with things, and we don't have people getting fired, and we never see any of that footage, like where the like, fuck it, the movie bomb, just show us the Phil Lord and Chris. If we see it, and we see that it sucks then we could go, okay, well, you guys made a good decision. But until we see that, I'm still curious about what that film was, especially since they did Spider-Verse as well, and that was great. So you have to show me, what's this one bad movie they made out of their filmography? Can, can we see some footage from it? There's really nothing to lose, but then on Disney+, Plus, like, here's this footage. Also at Disney+, Plus, please release the original trilogy without the special editions. I think that's what they said with that trailer, but I'm not really sure because that would also make me want to get Disney+. Plus. I would like to see like 4K Empire Strikes Back that's not the special edition. And especially it'd be nice to see Return of the Jedi with the fucking special edition. Get at it. Um, yeah, this is good news. So we should be celebrating, but it's only a small respite. We still have Rise of the Skywalker coming, which I <laughs> just fearing as being like even more of a disaster uh, than, than I was expecting a few months ago, especially when you're hearing about the reshoots and the leaks. It just does not sound good. So I think we dodged a bullet here. Uh, we dodged a bullet avoiding D&D, &D, and I'm very happy about this news, and I hope that Disney gets their shit together with Star Wars, because that's all I really care about. I just want good stuff. People think you hate Star Wars. That's what I read all the time. That's the comments. That's what you always get when you criticize these new movies. You just hate Star Wars. 
You just fucking hate Star Wars, okay? Why do you even act like you're a fan? It's the most disgusting thing in the world to you, Star Wars hater. Hey, man, there's always going to be haters. That's just the way it is. Hated guys marrying hated bitches having hated kids. Um, that's, that's just how things go. But I'm, I, I don't hate Star Wars. I fucking love Star Wars. I just want stuff that I like. Like, I thought that was the idea is they were going to make Star, they were going to make Star Wars stuff for everybody in different kinds of audiences. I didn't know I had to do with this, like, meta, stripped down, self-reflecting, uh, reboot bullshit. And stuff where you're remaking sequences and ideas from the original trilogy. I th I thought we were going to get more like, you know, ha half of the good stuff that's in Rogue One and a little bit of the stuff that was in Solo. I thought we were going to get stuff like that. I don't know. Um, this has been a clusterfuck. The lack of planning shows. And the only way they can fix this, I think, is to slow down and start planning much, much and, and spend the time on the planning so you can execute a better product because that'll have more longevity than just trying to keep getting that billion dollar gross from each new Star Wars film that's tied to the Skywalker saga. Because uh, Solo, Solo proved that they can fuck up. So they have to also prove that they can make something that has no ties to Star Wars in the way that we traditionally think about it and they can turn it to a hit, which they have yet to do now. Because even Rogue One had Darth Vader in it and tied itself to the original trilogy. So they, they have yet to show that they can branch out creatively. Uh, and I think Kevin Feige's the key to that. I think he could come up with a different Star Wars movie. And I think you got to bring in new talent. Like you got to bring in someone big. You got to go like Edgar Wright. You got to go to somebody and be like, listen, just do your thing. We'll give you like a hundred million dollars and just make something different. And uh, just trust that. Create new iconic characters that we fall in love with. You know, we need new characters we want to watch in new movies, and that's the biggest thing lacking. Out of anything in these new Star Wars movies is that we just don't love these new characters. And they've become memes. And uh, honestly, I've always said this. When, J when, when Han dies in Force Awakens, if I was J.J. Abrams and, and, and uh, uh, Lawrence Kasdan, I would have sat there and said, how do we avoid this becoming a meme? This cannot be a meme. And it became a fucking meme. That's exactly what happened. Because they're too fucking stupid to f figure out. <laughs> it, it's too much of a meme. Like, quit making this stuff fucking wonky and ridiculous. It, it just has to stop. But really, Game of Thrones Season 8 was so similar to The Last Jedi. Except a lot less people are defending it. They don't defend the bad writing like they do The Last Jedi. I don't know why. Maybe Star Wars means a lot more to people than Game of Thrones ever really did. At least the show. I'm not talking about the books. But <laughs> luckily, yeah, we, 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 we've avoided that. So hopefully we can get like, I don't know, let Vince Gilligan write a fucking Star Wars movie. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like bring someone in who has some chops. Like bring in someone like, hey, dude, give us something. Give us a treatment. No, just pay him. Give him like 500 grand and say, write us a script. If you don't like it, fuck it. But... I don't know. You, it seems to me they're just throwing money at this, which is, is I don't think, a good long-term decision to just throw money at it. I, I don't think it's a smart idea. Anyway, what do you think? How do you feel about D&D &D leaving? And, you know, is there any other Star Wars-related stuff you want me to talk about? I don't like to talk about Star Wars too much on this channel. I'm sort of over Star Wars, even though I used to be obsessed with it. Um, but, you know, with Rise of the Skywalker coming out, what are you going to do? I'm also going to try to talk about It Chapter 2 at some point this week before Halloween. Uh, maybe tomorrow and do like a Please Rewind Live uh, discussing that movie and how much of a fucking mess it is. Holy shit. They should have called that Shit Chapter 2. I am fucking blown away how sloppy that film was. <laughs> but that's a different discussion. Um, Yeah, Star Wars. What's going on? And let's not do this thing where we just like... Fuck Ryan Johnson, fuck Disney, all that stuff. Listen, yeah, I agree, guys. We've had that conversation. Let's try to be constructive. What would be your plan? What do you think Disney should do right now, especially with this trilogy now being canceled? I, I assume it's canceled, or they're going to bring someone else in. Uh, what do you think Disney should do with this franchise? And And try to think of it from a business standpoint, not just what you want as a fan, but like what could actually be successful to sustain Star Wars for another 10, 15 years. 
because I think they've milked this cow uh, to dry. I mean, I think the cow went from being a big, fat, fucking, you know, giant cow, and now it's just like, you know, it's like anorexic. You know, so what do they do? What do they do to get that cow filled up again? <laughs> that weird analogy. And he kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet. At that point, Jamie really has to has to take a really long, uncomfortable look at who he really is. I never really cared much for them, innocent or otherwise. And then, you know, she has said repeatedly throughout the show, I will take what is mine with fire and blood. The blood of my enemies, not the blood of innocence. Oh my God, they're serious about doing this fucking zombie bear. In the nicest possible way, fuck you. <laughs>